All right, now that I've filled out the uh, read topology mesh a bit more, I'm going to show you a few other different tools you can use in order to help speed up the workflow. So, for instance, down here we have these, uh, these sort of bands of rocks. And one really quick way that we can retopologize this entire region is using the strokes tool. So if I click on strokes tool and I just click and drag along the edge right here, there's one. And then I'm going to click and drag over here. Yep. 3D coat froze on me for a little bit, but it's all good now. So I'm going to draw around here. I want that to go out a little farther so I can just grab one of the points and move them around a bit. I'm going to grab another one right here, and I'm going to put final one over there. And then what I can do is I can then click and drag from these vertices going down. Yeah, I'll just put one here for good measure. And once that's all been drawn, just hit the Enter key, and there we go. Now I might want to move these around a little bit, just to help kind of optimize the silhouette. Now right here, for instance, I may just want to go in and just add in an extra vertex right there so I can help this be a little bit more rounded especially when the shape changes a little further down this structure and I can move this around a little bit now too because it does the polygons do or the vertices more accurately do get a little spread out as you go down the structure so that's one way to use the strokes we can continue that by just going along here We can just draw some out like so, and then around here don't have much of a reference like we did on the other side. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate how many we're going to need. Something like that should work. Now we can just fill in some larger regions of the model like that. Now there's a few other tools you can use. For example, if I wanted to put some polygons in here or more generally sometimes when you're working with concave surfaces when you're retopologizing the points and faces tool won't always work I'll try and find a situation where it doesn't I believe it wasn't working over here oh no it's working there too now hmm. well anyway in the off chance that you're putting a uh, trying to put a face down using this tool and you're not getting a result so See if I can find an example where it's not working. No. Huh. Well, often when you're working with a more complex surface like this, it can happen. And in the case that it does happen, you can use the quads tool, which allows you to click on an edge and then create polygons based on that edge. And this allows you to just kind of force polygons into place because the vertices and the resulting face will go exactly where you click. So in case the uh, points and faces tool isn't quite working out, you have this option as well. And to get out of the tool, you can just hit escape. So a few other techniques you can do is if I want to finish out this area down here uh, what I can do is I can go to select and by selecting edges actually more accurately I could use this to select individual edges but I can also use select path so I can go right here and click for here and then hit enter and those edges will become selected and now that they're selected I can go down to commands 
and I can hit extrude. And what that will do is that will just let me bring all the faces down. Now there are some cases where the points went a little further than I wanted them to, so that's where the brush tool actually comes in very handy. I can just gradually shift those around. There I guess should that should work. And I can go with my points and faces tool, and if I hold down control, I can add in another edge loop. So if I click that. And you see now that surface follows the um, the silhouette of the model a little bit better. That's another quick way to add in, or a quick way to fill out a large region. I'm not going to bother retopologizing the bottom of this rock mesh, uh, because in the environment that it's going to be placed in, it's going to be put on the ground. You're never going to see the bottom, so we don't want to waste triangles and, uh, trying to fill that out. So when working with retopology, those are the uh, tools that I commonly use. It's mostly just points, faces, quads, strokes, and occasionally some extruding. One other thing, though, that you might want to use if you're putting points in concave surfaces, like, say, around here, is, again, if we go to, if with points and faces, if we right-click on a point, we move it around, but it will stay selected. And then you can hit transform, and you can actually move the vertex around that way. And this allows you to actually move it off of the mesh. So that can be especially useful um, in an area around here. I actually moved the mesh off of the high resolution model just so that it would cover the model a little bit better. So like, so if I hit escape to be able to move these around, so like this point in particular, I kind of want to keep this line straight. But if I wanted it to be at the, basically to, ca to fully encapsulate this region of the model, I can select it, go to transform, and I can just move it out a little bit. And now it's no longer attached to the surface of the model, but if I were to grab it and move it around again, it will snap to the surface of the high resolution model. So you need to be careful when you're doing that. You can also use transform with any selection. So if I go to select and say select faces and just grabbed a large region of faces, then I can transform those as a group. Usually there's not a reason to do that, but it's good to know that it's there. And that's the basic retopology workflow for an object like this. So I'm going to finish retopologizing this uh, just until all the sides are covered. Again, not doing the bottoms. And in the next video, I will talk about how to UV unwrap this model.